Welcome. You're listening to Guiding Stars Evolutionary Astrology Radio. This is your host, Kristen Fontana, and I'm here with Stacey Pizzura today as we discuss the Damon archetype, one with the wild. So I'd like to welcome Stacey back to Guiding Stars. Welcome back. Thank you so much. This is take two of part two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, take 10 of part two. <laughs> For those of you who are with us last week or attempted to be with us. So we probably needed that week. There's been a lot going on in the world. And I think it allowed us time to <clears throat> go in even more deeply than we have been. So I just uh, wanted to, uh, again, welcome you back, Stacey. I'm really excited about this this particular series. It's so near and dear to both of our hearts. Yeah. As well as to the, art, uh, the heart of the founder of this work. Yes. All right, so let's let's get moving. Um, today we are going to review uh, what it means to be a Damon soul, and we're going to talk about where you can see those signatures in the birth chart. We're going to discuss some chart examples and show how the Damon archetype is reflected in those charts as well. So let's get going. All right. What is a Damon soul? And this very powerful image is a perfect picture of one aspect of the, ver uh, the daemon soul. It's essentially when the soul is fused with nature or the animal kingdom, or has a capacity to fuse with nature, plants, animals, in such a way that they move in step, in sync, in harmony. Mm. And there's a wildness about the daemon soul, uh, without question, an inner wildness. Now, when we resist that wildness in our essence, using kind of Capricorn ways of conditioning, fears, repression, uh, then that is going to show up very differently and than a natural daemon soul would like to express itself in the wild or in nature or in the world. Mm -hmm. And so many daemon souls if all of the resistance and the repression has fallen away, um, actually can look like an, an animal themselves. Like in this image, there's just something in her eyes, right? <laughs> Whether somebody looks like a cat or someone looks like a wolf or, you know, etc. Yeah. And I even know somebody who is so connected to birds and she's got the most delicate features ever <laughs> she does look like a bird to me and wow. her little I nose know her. <laughs> <laughs> even her little nose is shaped like a bird oh so you you can observe in in nature and in, in the human species when souls are really aligned to specific types of animals and we also really include the medicine woman in this archetype in, under the umbrella of plants in this context. And mm. maybe there are souls that are very connected to de uh, Deva spirits, uh, those little spirits that are flying around in your garden all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And what's so beautiful about this archetype, uh, when it's expressed naturally, you know, is that um, there is, there's such a union and a fusion and a mer emerging uh, there's such a harmony that can be experienced and there's no judgment, right? There's, there's nothing yeah. but pure emotion that's connecting you and that other soul. It's a little bit like yeah, some of these souls that work with wild horses, right? And they are able to literally get that horse to follow them mm -hmm. um, because they're connecting through, through the soul, soul to soul through pure emotion. Mm -hmm. That Cancer Scorpio Pisces archetype. And now while the Damon soul is really a mutable energy in the chart, uh, we as evolutionary astrologers talk about so much that the only way that the soul can evolve is through the emotional body. And so that's the Cancer Scorpio Pisces trinity. Mm -hmm. And the Damon soul and the animal itself uh, because animals are pure emotion, are, are naturally, they naturally live in the emotional body. Naturally, they're pure emotion. If you are a daemon soul and you're listening, 
uh, you are pure emotion. <laughs> no two ways about it. So we can see here that cancer is not part of this mutable axis, but the daemon soul is pure emotion. It is the beginning of that water trinity, and it leads you all the way back to Pisces, which is the most powerful piece probably of this mutable axis. axis. Mm -hmm. But daemon connects directly to Jupiter or Sagittarius. Jupiter and Sagittarius, I should say. Jupiter is the ruler for Sagittarius, and Sagittarius's are half horse, half human. That's where it starts. Ninth house, Sag, Jupiter connects to natural law, the natural wild within you. Mm -hmm. And uh, these other archetypes here, uh, part of the mutable axis, will also most likely be very prevalent in someone's chart who is a daemon soul. Um, I'll let you talk about this beautiful image if, if you wish, Stacy. The, the mutable access? Yeah. Um, gee, where do I start? <laughs> um, it well, really I, I would say start with the Gemini. You're so, you are too so connected to that. The diversity, so Gemini connects to the diversity of anything, right? So um, as well as flying animals, and we were talking a little bit about birds before we started. So, um, you know, just go ahead and explain why why the diamond daemon archetype consists of Gemini, Virgo, and Pisces? Well, part of our phenomenal creation and specifically nature, it's composed of all kinds of forms, all kinds of emotional beings, all kinds of different entities. And we all live together in a web and, you know, we all have our little spot in the web and it's that little spot that we inhabit that Gemini reflects. It reflects your immediate environment. And, and so naturally it is useful to, get to know your environment, to categorize your environment, to know how things work together. Um, you know, and as far as birds go, it being a, a, a reflection of Gemini, I mean, they're, they're completely Gemini. They, they fly around. They're not bound to any place. You know, I mean, sure they nest, but you know, they, they visit all kinds of places. They use their voices all day long. They're just curious and inquisitive and, you know, they're just measuring up the environment. And, you know, one of the things that I have um, kind of uncovered in my own evolution is, you know, listening to the birds you know, like, let's say you're alone in nature and there's some kind of threat. Guess what? The birds are going to tell you. <laughs> it's that kind of connection. It's, you know, so that's what I have. Awesome. To say. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what I uh, love hearing about, because you can see how this archetype of Gemini, when you think about Gemini with humans and how that manifests, right? This really restless nature, yeah. needing to flit and flee yeah. all over the place. Talk, 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 talk. And sure, there is this wild diversity uh, in the, in, within the bird kingdom. And so um, not just birds, though. It's, it, the reason why Gemini is part of this axis, it is simply the diversity of animals on every level that's just massive. Yeah. So, of course, we're going to find it there. And daemon souls, depending on the type of daemon soul you might be, uh, you're going to be attracted to different species of animals. Maybe you're into wild, the real wildlife, you know, and maybe you're just really drawn to those more dom domesticated animals, your cats, your dogs at home, and everything else that you have on the farm, perhaps. Um, but just feeling connected to, to animals, perhaps, because it's so simple. Life with animals is so simple. It's very uncomplicated. And simplicity is Virgo, <laughs> right? It's keeping things simple. We don't have any drama, you know, unless, <laughs> unless they're hungry or <laughs> something like that, <laughs> right? So, and looking here too at uh, the polarity of Virgo, we have Pisces and of course the sea animals would connect to Pisces, but also back to where I started with the animals being pure emotion, not having an agenda. They just want to be loved. Yeah. And isn't that what we all want too, to just be loved and to be loved for who we are um, and how we were created. Yeah. So that's very much uh, part of this Pisces piece too. And, and before we got cut off last week, uh, Stacy, you said something that I'm hoping you'll remember to repeat about <laughs> the, the Pisces piece of, of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, one of the things that's inherent to a daemon's soul is that their, their consciousness is inherently connected to nature. There is an inherent ability to perceive um, things that can't be seen from the surface. Um, it's an inductive logic um, or learning or knowledge. It's, it's inductive. You don't control it. it. It happens from within. And Damon's souls have this um, natural ability to connect with the wild land, with, with all the plants, all the animals. They can tune in. And, and because of that connection, there, is, there can be an ability to receive direct messages from that entity you know, if there's some kind of problem, there can be a message of, of what that entity needs. Or, you know, if there's some kind of imbalance in nature, there's just a, an internal understanding and you don't know where it comes from. It just, it's there and you know it. Um, and so in this way, Damon souls, part of the reason God created Damon souls are to serve as messengers of God, to be that bridge. Um, to be able to communicate with these other life forms and and it's not just communicating with life forms we can also perceive the pain in other people and it's it's through that same inductive um connection that that the magic happens <laughs> that's so true i mean even think about what's happening right now with this world pandemic all the souls on this planet that have a lot of pisces energy or 12th house energy that are naturally so empathic yeah anyway and they're picking up the pain of oh you know everything that's going on and it is so i'm thinking how are you i mean i don't know all the animals in in my world are acting a little cuckoo themselves because they don't even know what to do with what they're feeling right, right. everything kind of got weird um you know especially with with my big animal here um the big old english mastiff and he's mm. just not been himself especially since yeah he moved into aquarius he's the most calming force ever to be oh. around. And then, yeah. you know, all of a sudden things are just a little jittery. <laughs> yeah. And he just can't, nothing satisfies him actually. And it's because, and he's never been like that. So he's picking up the collective and he does happen to have Mars and Venus in Pisces, balsamic and a 12th house sun. So he's already the soft, <laughs> you know, giant ever south. Just, <laughs> but um, so, Pisces as an archetype connects to being able to osmose your environment without wanting to, <laughs> trying to, yeah. wish, wishing you didn't, <laughs> wishing that you didn't have to many of the times. It's kind of like being in an environment where all of a sudden you're osmosing the energy of somebody else. You could be in a restaurant, you could be in a park, you could be anywhere. And all of a sudden you don't know if it's what you're feeling or what somebody else is right. feeling. And so they're so sensitive to the pain of others, to the pain of the planet, to to anything that they're picking up. And another thing, it's like this incredible radar they have, as you know, I, dogs well before any animal, really well before an earthquake's about to happen, they're yeah. sensing it. Yeah. Right? And so it's a highly sensitive energy and aura. And, you know, if, if they feel safe and if they feel seen, you know, literally back to this Gemini, you'll have them in the palm of your hand. Right. It's just the way it is. So beautiful, beautiful access here. I love this slide so much. But just a review, we did talk about this in the first uh, part of this series. And so if you missed that one, got some great charts, check it out. All right, next slide. All right. So in addition to this mutable access, please um, feel free to check out your asteroids, Damon and Wolf. Um, it's literally uh, D Damien, which is not what you might think it is, because uh, of course, Patriarchal Ways had a way of uh, really changing the name, uh, so yeah. to speak, from, you know, Damon, Demon kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it's 4266 and Wolf is 5674. Uh, and you can find your asteroid placements at this website shown here, true-no.com true no, true and uh, backslash EPH. I think that's a one. 
So you can also get your south nodes and north nodes of these asteroids. And just like we teach in evolutionary astrology, we don't look at one symbol and call it a day. You know, we start with right. Pluto and the nodes and the rulers of the nodes. And then we start yeah. weaving in all these other archetypes, including the asteroids. Yeah. They will give you more detail to the story. Mm -hmm. So I loved looking up these asteroids, <laughs> these charts. <laughs> in the first part, we did share some wonderful Damon stories uh, linked with the founder of EA, Jeff Green. And I have another story I want to share today that I remembered, uh, you know, with all the time in school early on, which I feel so fortunate to have been able to be a part of. Um, I was looking back at old notes and remembering old stories and this one in particular came back to me. Uh, and before I get to that story, though, I just want to review his chart. If this is your first time joining us for a Damon webinar, we, we've got a strong mutable uh, representation here with obviously South Node, Sun, Mars, all in Sagittarius. Uh, and we've got, of course, a ninth house Pluto. That's where we start. Forgive me, ninth house Pluto. And then uh, we've got obviously a north node in Gemini with Uranus and this, this, uh, this, this nodal axis is squaring a moon in Pisces. So uh, there is mutable everywhere. And uh, south node with the sun, with Mars and Sag, many lifetimes in the wild, did not even want to come out of the wild, I was sort of forced out of the wild. <laughs> I think God said, you know, you have to be a, you know, be with humans. You have to, yeah you know, North Node in the seventh in order to evolve and right. you can help them with your nature and with natural teachings. Yes. And that's how this species evolved. So it's time to, to come out of the woods in the wild. And he's got what, Wolf in, at three Pisces and that Damon is at eight Gemini. So again, repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. That's how we work with uh, evolutionary astrology. The repeating themes tell a story. If you have any question, about what if what you're seeing is on point or accurate, look for repeating themes. You know, even here that Damon, H Gemini on the North Node is trining Neptune in the 11th. And, you know, he is obviously a, a very evolved soul, mm -hmm. uh, but this is very much, you talked about sort of, you know, being messengers of God <laughs> through yeah. his Damon spirit. Well, there it is. Yeah. So I wanna share a really cool story that I loved remembering. Uh, Back in the 90s, Wolf went to, we'll call him Wolf, Yeah, uh, went to Israel, uh, and Maurice Fernandez invited him back there to teach. And uh, Maurice took him to a very old Christian church that was halfway in between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem somewhere. And I, apparently it was like a couple hundred year old church and run, run by some French Christians. <laughs> Think about that in Israel. Um, <laughs> And Maurice just wanted him to see it and experience it. And um, they sat in this ritualist, ritualistic service, which is run by the main guy there, some priest. And on the way out, they just started going out through the door. And this dog came running toward him out of nowhere. And he was told after the fact that this dog had been hanging around the church. Um, uh, but he wouldn't let anybody go near him. And hmm. so as soon as Wolf leaves the church, dog comes running toward him of course the priests are like blown away that he's going near anybody wow and um he started you know jumping up on his legs and and wolf being wolf he squatted down to pet pet the dog and uh wolf looked deep into his eyes into his soul and what he saw was that this dog was completely freaked out um he's he was afraid of evil essentially something happened to him he was deathly afraid and because of something that happened to him, uh, he was hanging out around the church and he was hoping that somebody there could do something about it. That's what the dog told him. And so what Wolf did is he put his hand or his thumb on his third eye and essentially, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't call this a, uh, what do you call it? A um, exorcism or anything, right. but he freed his soul. He freed his soul from this feeling. He sh freed his soul with, uh, the, with the light, with God, essentially with the truth that you do not need to be afraid. Yeah. And he said these words in Latin and forgive oh. me if anyone is listening, <laughs> if I'm completely mispronouncing this, something like, 
Bat cat bobus liberum diaboli. Bat cat bobus liberum diaboli. And basically it means vacate, you know, free this, liberate mm -hmm. this dog from evil. Oh. Or from the fear of evil. So yeah. here's a Damon's soul, right? This dog, after that happened, he was so happy, he's wagging his tail, jumping up and down, and he just ran off into the trees nearby. And apparently the looks on the faces of the priests nearby were just aghast. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. So I just love that story because, you know, this is a Damon's, this is a dog and, and a, uh, an animal rec recognizing a daemon soul, knowing that he could help him. Yeah. And Wolf had been, has been a, a priest in, in other lifetimes. In yeah. fact, he was a priest during the dark ages in Italy and was an exorcist, an exorcist priest who performed exorcisms in fact yeah. he lost his life that way hmm. um and you can see that exorcism is eighth house he's got uranus opposing his mars squaring his moon there's like this sudden ending here and we've got <laughs> venus rising which connects you to uh the italy italy in particular as a libra archetype and uh the neptune ruler of his moon is also in libra and Pluto, Saturn's balsamic in the ninth. So that was one of his lives, though, uh, was to um, perform these exorcisms. But that was not why the dog came running to him. And, you know, it didn't take long. So they were able to communicate through hyperspace, essentially. They were communicate that way. He was able to put his hand on him, Gemini, yeah. right? Right on his third eye and free him um, from this from yeah. this fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like to let him know, like you're understood. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you don't need to be afraid. I mean, essentially putting light into his soul again, so that yeah. would eclipse the fear. Yeah. All right. So that was um, just a story I wanted to share. Uh, wait, we'll go back one moment, please. Down below, uh, if you want to return to this webinar later to just teach yourself some of these things, we do have the nodes, south and north, north node of these asteroids shown below. So you can drop them into this chart and see if you can uh, follow the story that even I just shared uh, through your studies. Yeah. So that's what, the, what it should look like if you go to that website and try and plot your own asteroids. All right, next chart. All right, Tia Torres. I talked so much on this last one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Stacy, you want to start with this and I'll jump sure. in. Sure. Oh. Look at her. Well, first of all, let's talk about who she is if people don't know about it. Yeah. She, this woman is tough as nails. She's had a history um, in, you know, in the kind of, what do you call it? Just the places that are not acceptable. You know, she had some gang involvement, involvement early in her life. She, um, she knows what the underdog means. And, you know, one of the most formative experiences of her life is when she had an uncle who dropped off a, a half wolf, um, a wolf dog. And she took care of that thing. And, she, you know, I, this is in her bio and she talks about how the one thing her mother taught her, because her mom was the disciplinarian in her upbringing, and the one thing that her mother taught her was that owning animals is a privilege, and they come first. So she, her life was about getting up in the morning and taking care of the animals, and then she could take care of herself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just really form just this incredible discipline within her and you know she had a rebellious adolescence um you know went through those experiences and but yet along the way with her work with animals it it just really like tuned in like her, her sense of purpose like like there's a need for her you know because she has she has an ability because pit bulls Let's face it. Okay, and let's just say that she's the she's the founder of um, Via Lobos uh, Sanctuary, which is a sanctuary for pit bulls, and um, these are the most understood breed. This is the most misunderstood. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Misunderstood, <laughs> misunderstood breed. Um, 
of all breeds. Um, you know, a lot of times if they go into the shelters, they go right to death row and people are afraid. And, and she just had, because of this um, mutable, like th these capacities that she has, you see, you know, you've got Pluto and Virgo and North Node in Virgo, Pisces, um, you know, she's got her son and her Venus and Gemini. There, there's just a, a, a very natural connection to tuning in to the consciousness of that animal. And as a result, she knows how to deal with them. And as a result of that, she knows how to, I, I think I'm going too far. <laughs> you know, uh, okay. I'm so good. Um, um, yeah. No, I, I would say too that remember, what I would what I would do if someone's just learning to look at the chart from a Damon archetypes perspective, start with anything in the ninth, anything in Sag, and look for Jupiter. I mean, those are the three places to start. And her, she's got Jupiter on the galactic center in Sagittarius. It's retrograde, and um, this is a rectified chart. But I, she does look like a first house Pluto, does she not? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Leo rising definitely got to be because she's on, she's on stage. She's on telly mm -hmm. and she's got that packed fifth house with this rectified chart. What does not change with a rectified chart is that Jupiter's at 29. It's almost to Capricorn. She, it is, you know, all yeah. the way through that. In fact, Jupiter had come into Capricorn right then stopped and went retrograde before she was born. And then she was born at 2948 retrograde. So she was coming back to, to recover, help recover this archetype yeah. phase and, and to really to try and help heal the underdog, like you talked yeah. about that North Node in Virgo. And by the way, Via Lobos means town of wolves. Yeah. And that's what she named her center. She said she grew up with wolves. And so um, anyway, I think what you shared was, was perfect. Um, it's, it is for any soul, for any soul, it's our responsibility to figure out why we are here. Why did you come here? What did you come here to do? Yes, an incredible amount of rebellion. Look at all the retrograde planets in her chart. Oh, you yeah. Know, there's no way. And a hugely broken home, really difficult life. Yeah. She fell in love with a guy who ended up in jail. Right. And so it was that experience even further where she wanted to give these ex-convicts a chance right yes. after they were released from prison yes so here she is you know uh, south Node and pisces in the seventh house you know i forgive you and she forgave her ex he came out of jail and then he got busted again and now he's back in jail till like 2025 oh, no. so you know there's this overly forgiving nature yes. of her. um and so i put i um i don't know that she could be even uh, born a little or before this because that would have put uh, wolf closer even to the icy her asteroid wolf but this is kind of what I feel she feels like to me you know when I've watched this show many times because I love pit bulls and I love what they're doing yeah 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 so um and also you know wolves are such it's all about the pack all about family it's all about tribe and she is yeah. very much like that too she's got okay. that oh my gosh the saturn moon conjunction and capricorn all her whole family works for daughters work with her for her mm -hmm. um and she very much you know really gosh now thinking about that well, here i'm still trying to rectify the chart but pretty close here. <laughs> but anyway obviously her own family growing up wasn't necessarily this close family raised by a stepmom but she had her own feeling and experience of family came through her animals yeah. and then it was when she was at a uh, shelter someone had dro just dropped off a pit bull who who was the only remaining survivor at some like violent like murder scene or something it was on some property everybody died but the dog oh, and wow. this pit bull was brought into the shelter and she adopted this pit bull and this pit bull just gave so much love to her daughters she's like i gotta figure out how to help this species of dogs you know this breed of dogs i should say yeah. and so that's you know where it started and she ended up i think it might have been 2010 with 250 pit bulls on her property mm. 250 that's, that's so yeah. crazy um but she, she said too that the pit bulls and parole teaches others that the show what she wanted that the 
but the pit bulls themselves and the paroles, what they're learning, they're, the pit bulls and the paroles, the ex-convicts are learning responsibility, yes. sure, for their actions, yeah. and compassion. Yes. That's what they're teaching each other also. Uh, and I love what she said in an interview that I watched of hers. She was on Ellen, actually, and I was enjoying that little bit. Hmm. But she said that dogs don't judge. You know, they don't care if you have tattoos and a bad pass. Like I said earlier today in the set, at the very beginning of this webinar, they just love. That's all they want to do. That's all they really want to do. Yeah. But of course, anyone who's been abused, you're going to have a trigger and you're just going to want to protect yourself. And they know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's, let's look at her asteroids here. Of course, Damon's in tw at 12 Pisces and yeah. the wolf, I, I do feel is probably close to that I see. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it's, we don't have the, the outer planet shown here, but I'm sure if we looked at the nodes of all those planets, it would be hitting many things in her chart. Um, my sense is about that. So any, any thoughts? Any more thoughts about this, Stacy? her chart? I Just that I guess, you know, I, she's got this sun and this Venus in the 10th, you know, the 10th house, Saturn, and then she's got this moon with the Saturn in the, what is the fifth? There's this creative purpose to communicate and to inform people about the reality of things that are misunderstood and, you know, she's bringing not only the most misunderstood breed into her care, but she's also bringing the people that no one else wants to deal with and, you know, bringing it all together. And I just think it's the most beautiful thing. She's like so tough. She is so tough. She speaks with so much authority, but yet you can, her heart is gold. She just wants to help everyone who wants to get up and make that effort. And so I just love her. I agree. And, and again, that's why I put her Pluto near the ascendant, she put her Mars in the eighth. She's like a no bullshit lady. She's like, <laughs> there's no way, there's no way else I can say it. She does not take it. No. From anybody, and she's afraid of nothing. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's, it's also because, you know, she like, I love that you added that. Thank you, Stacy. She wanted to help uh, communicate to others, you know, about, but the truth of this animal and to help yeah. other people understand who they are at their essence. And if you don't fall in love with those dogs, when you watch that show, <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I know. Can, how can you not, I guess is what I'm also saying here. Yeah. So she has a South node of Wolf and Libra. She's got a South node of Damon, um, excuse me, a North node of Damon and Libra. You know, so all this Libra and energy, I, I see this here because all her soul really wants to do is to help the victims, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not all ex-convicts were victims, but every, she believes in forgiveness and everybody yeah. gets a second chance. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect, right? North Node and Virgo, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Just keep trying, just keep getting up every day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. huge amount of respect for her. Yes, me too. All right. Next chart. Okay, so this is not somebody famous, but somebody that I know that I'm going to call medicine woman, because this woman is magic with medicine. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, tinctures, homeopathy, um, she doesn't even do it for a profession, but she's obviously a medicine woman from other times, and she's a daemon soul, for sure. Uh, you can see her wolf in his 28 Pisces in the 6th, and she's got her daemons right on her sun sign, and Uranus in the 11th. She's one of these souls, uh, let's see, we've got, well, Pluto in the, in the 11th with Mars, balsamic. Uh, this is a strong tribe signature. She was like the medicine woman in a tribe for many lifetimes. And uh, it was interesting. I was just noticing that, and I didn't realize that when I would rectify Tia Torres's chart, but I put every house cusp at 29 degrees. It was a coincidence. I didn't, I just wanted to give her a late Leo rising, but in this particular chart, this is a real time. And so I think I've done maybe two or three tops, maybe only two in 21 years charts of people that have 29 degree house cusps. Remember it only goes to 30. Right. And so 
There are so many culminating signatures in this chart. Every house cusp is 29 and change. We have uh, Pluto Mars balsamic, Venus Mercury balsamic, Sun Uranus balsamic. And then we've got this interesting flip from the ascendant descendant with Virgo Pisces, but at 29 degrees. Remember, she is a medicine woman, which medicine woman connects to Virgo, the archetype of Virgo in particular, of course, the Virgo Pisces polarity. You've got the diversity of plants that you're using through Gemini and obviously using nature, ninth house, Jupiter, Sag, uh, to access the medicines to help heal the sick, mm. heal the animals. Mm -hmm. And um, she has had a very, uh, very, I would say, her li whole life has been like a full moon. And that's what happens with these climaxing signatures where everything's coming full circle, maximum pressure. You are going to deal head on with whatever is left. And it doesn't mean it's her last, last life on the planet. It's literally, she is squeezing out the, the, the juice, <laughs> the juice she doesn't want anymore, really. All, squeezing out the bad, squeezing out the, the things that have gotten in the way of her growth. And one of the things that she went through in this life, apart from everything that she owned burned down and burning down in a fire, uh, which is all that Pluto Mars in the 11th, this one, ha one minute her house was, and everything she possessed was gone. And she left with her guitar and a box of pictures. Luckily she had those. Um, she lost her tr daughter traumatically. Um, I, I can't remember, the daughter was 10. It was around that time they were separated and, and it was brutal. And what, what happened through that trauma is it brought her deeper into her nature. All she had left was God, literally. All she had left was the garden. All she had left was the mother, as she calls her. Moon on the North Node in Scorpio, Mother Earth. It's all she had left. Yeah. And there's nothing like the feeling of losing someone you love. For those of you that have lost someone you love, um, whether it's an animal who felt like your child or, or a child or a partner or anybody that you love, there's nothing like trauma. Yeah. It changes you. And so she actually discovered or rediscovered a medicine called Echinacea Mara, M-A-R-A, that she swears saved her life um, to deal with her heartbreak. And wow. so it took getting her heart broken so bad before she literally had tachycardia. You can see that through all, she still does, through all the um, trauma signatures in the 11th house um, in Leo uh, is the only thing that kept her heart beating. Echinacea Mara. So again, so many of these stories too that, you know, we haven't gotten to too deeply, but uh, Stacy and I could probably- I know. Good long time on our own stories, but um, is that and when we deny who we are, when we deviate from our thumbprint, mm -hmm. our fingerprint, uh, we are just, uh, eventually we're going to have to come back to who we are. And sometimes it takes a tremendous amount of shock and trauma, cataclysmic events to wake us up to who we are meant to be who we actually are for us to remember the power of who we are so we can finally heal. Yeah. And so, I mean, I would say this is maximum life for evolution for this soul. Yeah. You know, one thing you're saying, you're, you're pointing out all of the culminating symbols and here, you know, I, I don't think you mentioned it, but Mars is balsamic to Pluto and that that's showing you how many lifetimes the soul has just gone through this stuff. And uh, yeah, she's over it. <laughs> yeah, I did mention that. I did mention that. That's probably one of the hardest signatures in her chart. So if anybody has that symbol, <laughs> uh, Princess Diana had that same symbol, but in her eighth house. Mm. And, um, that really speaks to the intensity of what that can, can bring. And so much, you know, so often people with Pluto Mars balsamic will feel like a victim of their circumstance. Oh my God, my house burned down. I lost everything yeah. I owned. It might, my, my I just lost, tragically lost my daughter. And um, it's pretty hard not to feel like a victim when yeah. those things happen. Um, look at the ruler of her 
South node is Venus, balsamic to Mercury in the 12th house. The themes are repeating all over the place. Every house cusp is 29 degrees, right. 48 minutes. It's like, <laughs> it just doesn't get, I have never actually ever seen a chart quite like this. Um, so I wanted to share it that there's always a silver lining to every dark cloud. And even now in this world, there have been many stories that reflect the silver lining. Look at that. Even Jupiter's sitting right on the ascendant in the 12th house. Yeah. That is a, <laughs> that is a guardian angel signature if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just went, I ran, I went, I just went strong in that chart. It's just, I feel very. I'm moved by, um, I, I just moved by the whole life of this soul and uh, mm. just the places that she's been able to mm, come through because of her faith and because of this desire to, to finally put some things to rest that have caused her so much trauma for a lifetime. So yeah, hopefully this is the last of all that this time. Yeah, yeah, she can yeah. just like, be born in a garden. <laughs> I know. <laughs> with all the plants at her disposal, or a forest or someplace beautiful with all the plants that she needs at her disposal. I mean, look at that Neptune in, in the second house sextiling that Pluto Mars. I mean, she just yeah. has a natural way. Yeah. For sure. Okay. We know we, we could go on and on too about the nodes of these asteroids, but if you want to take a look back at this chart later at another time, then you've got it here for yourself to continue to learn through the, some of the stories that we're sharing today. Okay. Stacy. Hey. Woo <laughs> this is our girl. <laughs> and uh, of course we, you know, you, you couldn't be talking about this in the same way unless you, really knew what it felt like right oh. um, and you do so yeah. I'm gonna let you take this one since you know you better than anyone but before I pass the baton please look at our nodal axis everybody it's stationary stationary nodes is like an exclamation point this is your life to recover <laughs> your nature mm -hmm. Jupiter squaring the nodes in her ninth Hello, this is like the very first archetype I was talking about. Right out of the gate, Stacy, and you have it. <laughs> so Ooh. you have it everywhere. So this is for a skip step uh, teaching. Yes. This is a perfect chart yes. uh, for Stacy to recover her voice, to show her face on the screen, to say, I'm back, people. I am, <laughs> be, I am gonna be a, a bird. I'm gonna be a wolf. I'm gonna be whoever I wanna be, but I am gonna share with you all my story. So here yeah. you go. There's your chance. Yeah. And, and one thing I actually really want to kind of emphasize through my chart is that when I first c came into this work, I, you know, when I first heard Jeffrey Wolf Green use the word Damon soul and describe it, of course, I just automatically, I knew, I knew it was me. But the one thing that, that caused me some doubt was that, you know, he, he, he taught about it in such a way that he describes almost what happens when you're well along the evolutionary path. And, and one thing that I really want to dis, or, um, share through, through my chart is that it's a process. We don't all come out just like perfectly psychic and like we can just go out and talk to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got, to, you've, you've got to put yourself in nature You've got to get your hands dirty. You've got to be with it. You've got to listen to it. You've got to look at it. You've got to feel it. Um, it takes work. And, you know, my, my story is pretty interesting because I was raised in a, in a, in a religion that feared nature. You know, dirt is bad. Insects are terrible. You know, you should be scared. You know, don't let the animals inside. Kind of. I actually had, my dad was a really big influence in, in nurturing my, my daemon ways, but, um, but the culture, I, I would say that for me, my culture had um, a bigger effect on my, my formation than my actual parents did, believe it or not. Um, and so, you know, I was just really wounded, just kind of growing up and trying to 
you know, not be judged and not be excluded and just be super sensitive and um, just not relating to people. Um, just really wanting to spend all of my time with animals. Just that's all I wanted to do. And, um, but as you get to adulthood, it's like, <laughs> you can't just play with animals. You've got to get out there in the world. And so um, I, I really did in, in my young adulthood, I created a lifetime of which you can, which you can see in these skip steps, you know, this uh, moon and Jupiter in, in the ninth house in Pisces. This is like the epitome of glamorization, right? So for me, my way of being accepted into the world was to try and be pretty, <laughs> you know, to try and, and, and just put on an appearance of normalcy. And, you know, that takes time, that takes effort. And that was time that I was taking away from what my, my nature really called me to. And so, um, you know, fast forward, I, I came across, across EA and, and the Damon soul archetype. And I was like, I'm sure this is me, but I don't feel like I have the capacities that are being described. And so I'm not sure. And, um, and one of the things Wolf said to me is, um, you know, you need to, you need to embrace animal work. And I remember that was so hard for me because at the time I wanted to be an astrologer. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. you're supposed to tell me that I'm meant to be an astrologer, not someone to work in a veterinary clinic or, you know, something like that. And, and I remember I was so traumatized by it at first, <laughs> but I took his advice and, you know, it just so happened that, I mean, you were there, it, it happened at a school and, I volunteered my chart and, and uh, you know, it, all the symbols were just pregnant with meaning. There was just something about to happen. And in fact, I, cause I was married at the time and that very night I got a phone call at the hotel and it was my, my husband back then saying I'm gone. And like that night and because of the preparation that Wolf had given me and, and he, he kind of helped me to understand that like, listen, you're, you're going along a path that is not natural to you. You need to get back to nature. And um, because of that preparation, I was able to cooperate and, you know, it was the cleanest divorce you could ever imagine, but I was unemployed because I was studying astrology. And so I thought, okay, what am I going to do with my life now? And I just never lost those words. You know, I, I really, I really, it really hit me that yes, I do have some kind of destiny in nature. I'm not going to be a superstar, but it, it's where I belong. And so I started volunteering at a, at a, an aviary, which is a, you know, a zoo for birds. And um, within six months, they hired me. I had no experience. And this is, un this is unheard of in the animal field. You've got thousands of applicants for every opening. So it was literally like, I'm, you can see the symbols in my chart, the, the, the Neptune and the Venus and the sixth and Sag. You know, if, if you just put your effort toward the work, God will help you. And so here I was put into this position and suddenly I'm, I'm, a, I'm a zookeeper and I was in charge of hundreds of birds. And um, gosh, this is, I, I'm trying to like kind of, cause I'm, I'm like aware of time here. Um, I read it. How much time do I have? You have time, just keep talking. Okay. And so once I, once I started the job, um, you know, I, it, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done because, you know, I was really alienated from these other people who were staff, you know, they were all just natural people and, you know, they just, and here I am, this person coming in with no experience and, and frankly, you know, I was kind of seen as a weirdo because my knowledge wasn't coming from protocol. It was <laughs> from inside and people would sometimes resent me for it you know they would think who are you you know to to think this or to recommend that and you know this is what the protocol says and you know and and one of the problems within captive 
animal keeping is that you have to you have to adhere to timelines. And for me, <laughs> if you can look in my chart, look at all that Pisces, like I've got, gem, you know, like time is like, what? <laughs> I don't understand time. And, and it was, it, I fought it from the first day that I started to the very last day that I was there. And I, I don't think I ever finished my work on time. I would sneak back in, like I would pretend like I was going home. I'd wave to everyone and then I'd sneak in and <laughs> prepare things for the next day. And um, I got in trouble for it. But, but what I found over the years in doing this work, and, 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 and one thing I do want to reiterate is that I really did feel just a profound sense of alienation with the other zookeepers that were there, you know, um, because they were all credentialed and, and I was just, I ended up earning the name of Crazy Stacy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and they, they, they meant it with, with some endearment there. Um, Cause I really was, I just came up with things that were outside of the box. And um, I guess I should talk about some of those. I think we have slides, Zinda, do we have slides? Do we have the next slide? Oh yeah, okay, this is a beautiful example. So as I started to get comfortable with, with my position there, um, this, this guy came to us, this is a cormorant. Um, whenever a bird comes into a zoo, they, they are mandatorily put in quarantine for 30 days. And this guy, he just would not eat. Everyone was trying to feed him. They were trying to give him all kinds of treats. He just would not take anything. And, um, at the time I was a relief keeper. So I sort of bounced through people's um, areas that they were assigned to. And I came to, you know, it, it just naturally lined up that I was in this area where this guy was housed and, and I learned about his situation and I was alarmed. Like it had been three days since he had eaten and no one was making, raising alarms about it. I mean, you can, birds will self starve. And so I just, I went in there, I went into his area and it, 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 this is the Damon thing. It, it's not something that you think about or you just decide you're gonna do. It's inherent, it's inductive. And it just came to me, like he was scared and lonely and he just needed to see, you know, he needed to see someone like himself. And so <laughs> that night I went out and bought this little like $1 mirror and the next day I mounted it on his, uh, right in front of his food tray. Yeah. And guess what he did? Immediately. Yeah. He, he, and he never had a problem after that either. He just needed to see himself. He needed to, he needed company and it was something that simple. And, you wow. know, so yeah, that's just an example. Um, what other slides do I have? I have so many stories I could talk about days. This is actually a personal example. Um, thank you, Linda. <laughs> um, I had a mouse problem in, in my backyard. I was feeding birds and, you know, the mice were taking advantage of it and they were just multiplying and getting out of control and, um, you know, something had to be done, but I, I just refused to use poisons because poisons are just, oh boy. The, that's like the worst death ever. And so I, I remember sitting there in my backyard just, and I put my head in my hands, just crying, you know, like, I don't know what to do about this. What do I do? I don't want to hurt them. And, but yet I can't let this happen. And, and I, you know, after a few minutes, I looked up and this Kestrel, this is the guy, he was sitting on this pole that I had, and he was just looking right at me. And I don't know, you know, for those of you who know about kestrels, they tend to go for mice. <laughs> they, you know, they'll, they'll go for birds every once in a while, but their favorite is mice. And that kid hunted in my yard for like at least a month, every single day he was there. And that mice population just dropped. <laughs> so it was just, oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. And that, yeah, I had to grab that picture. Yeah. I took that out of my window. I was like, yeah, he's doing his thing. That's awesome. So that's the rebalancing of nature. And that's, you know, part of the Damon thing. That's right. um, 
So do I have any other stories lined up here? I don't think, do I? Oh, these are just pictures of birds that I've worked with. This is a flamingo flock. You see the chick there in the mud nest. They're very group oriented birds. They're just really fascinating. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share the joy of that. This here, morning doves are really special to me because of their call. It's just so somber and haunting. And um, I took that picture. Wow. <laughs> really cute. Talk about trust, right? Yeah, definitely. And this is, you know, a sharp shinned hawk. This is an urban bird. This is an urban hawk that you might see from time to time. Um, they're small hawks. So I caught a little picture of him. And then I think there's one more. Oh, this, this guy, this is actually my dad's bird. This, this great horned owl showed up at my dad's house and just lit, like he would just constantly show up. And I think he became kind of a, gosh, I don't know, like a spiritual, spiritual messenger to my dad, you know? Um, he was, he, he would just, yeah, like a friendship. He, he's since moved from there, but um, that was a really special bird. Wow, beautiful. And then this is also an urban hawk that a lot of us will probably know. Um, yeah. Cool. And this is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, so this guy, um, I was really fortunate. There was a, another family that, that had him as a puppy and they had to um, rehome him and we got connected and I brought this guy home and I, I've never had such a close and loving bond with a, with an animal. He's just, he's my therapy dog. He's just amazing. So. Awesome. Beautiful. I love that. Oh, wow. This is quite a deviation. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> I'm seriously just in la la land floating. <laughs> these images and of course now we have to deal with reality a little yes, bit. yes it's perfect it is um because it's our reality but yeah. um, animals are not killing people humans are is what this is about and the world's most trafficked animal which they're saying is involved in this wuhan outbreak uh, the pangolin is using chinese medicine the scales as well as they do eat the animal itself uh, one of the wi most widely uh, traded wild animals in, in the world. I had no idea. But mm. <clears throat> anyway, what just killed me, made me just absolutely aghast, is when they're saying that they, they feel that this particular animal, uh, like is, in Chinese medicine, you know, heals all these things like excessive nervousness and hysterical crying in children, women possessed by devils oh, and ogres, not men, <laughs> have you women. <laughs> um, malarial fever and deafness, really? Um, so of yeah. course, what beliefs will do, it's a Jupiter thing, another I, Jupiter yeah. figure. This would be the shadow of Jupiter. And so what happened was of course, at the wet market, you know, when, when they've got all these different breeds of animals that are mixed together and the bat will fly on whatever animal it does or have some kind of contact or fuse or merge in some way. I mean, not even, not sexually, just, you know, having contact. Right. Um, then this is how viruses are born. And so anyway, such a gentle creature, this adorable animal, and yet it's becoming, it was becoming extinct because of all these beliefs that are, are absolutely paramountly not true. Is that a word, paramountly? I don't know. <laughs> so excited. In the I, next, so. I, just, I just can't believe what people do right. with these beliefs. <clears throat> and yeah. it's amazing what the mind can tell itself is true. But like all things, there is good that comes as a result of the bad. And um, China has just signaled not only an, um, a temporary ban on a wild animal trade, they've signaled an end to dog meat consumption by humans. So they're now apparently God are not going to be killing dogs. And um, wow, a, I didn't know that. It just came out. There's a new article in the message board that, that I was reading. And 
uh, it's the, it says, citing the progress of human civilization as well as growing public concern over animal wel welfare and prevention of disease transmission from animal to, animals to humans, China's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs singled out canines as forbidden in a draft whitelist of animals allowed to be raised for meat. The ministry called oh. dogs a special companion animal. Yes. <laughs> and one not internationally recognized as livestock. So, you know, we are seeing some good coming out of the bad. Uh, hopefully yeah. the pangolins can get back to being pangolins. Yeah. And, you know, multiply again and not be uh, very close to extinction. And uh, I just, uh, this yeah. piece about dogs, I just was celebrating. Yeah. Uh, just just this, yeah, this morning, I think, when I, when I read wow. that article. Um, in addition, I know that uh, there was an article that uh, Jane Goodall was, uh, let's see, that was in the Atlantic, I believe. Um, and the title of it is Jane Goodall says, disrespect for animals caused patent pandemic. And it's of course true. Uh, Jane Goodall, we don't have her chart here, maybe another time, but uh, obviously a dame in soul. You talked about uh, time. It takes time to remember who you are. Yeah. Especially if you're a daemon soul living in this world, how can you not? You just don't yeah. end up in these epic places to uh, unite and fuse and communicate with Deva spirits, plants, and animals. I mean, obviously, most yeah. of us are in the world as we are, and um, many of your, your skip steps are directly linked to not only, as you said, glamorization, Pisces is all about hiding, Stacey. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a lot of daemon souls will hide within cultures because um, who they are isn't necessarily understood either or um, necessarily celebrated. Right. And it's pretty hard to live out in the wild if, you know, on your own, there are people that do that on occasion. Yeah. And so uh, Jane Goodall, as we all know, what did she do forever? She watched. Yes. She observed, right? Mm -hmm. She just didn't like, you know, everybody wanted to, to all the men in white coats and ivory towers wanted to judge how she went about her science. Just <laughs> like your science, you used your intuition, right? And that's what she did. And so, I mean, that woman is still traveling. She's got to be like 86 by now or something. Yeah. And again, huge amount of respect for this soul. Oh, she's incredible. Yeah. So all these, uh, you know, all these people are kind of coming out of the woodwork now and giving it a, giving those without a voice, another voice, <laughs> more of a voice. Yeah. And so th thank God for that. All right. So mm, tomorrow is Easter mm. and we celebrate the story of a very powerful messenger, teacher mm. of natural laws and truths. It's really what men did and took with what was actually occurring at that time and and turned it into a very different body of work called the Bible. But Jesus, <laughs> Jesus did teach, uh, teach souls how to access the God within. He taught souls uh, that the last shall come first, that we take care of the downtrodden. Uh, and nothing made him more angry than watching uh, the, uh, that, the world of dominance, yes. us versus them, I'm better than you are, uh, nothing made him more angry. And yeah. so anyway, he's got a very strong mutable access here. And whether it's uh, having uh, Mary Magdalene next to him as a reminder that women are equal to men <laughs> or uh, whatever else it might have been, but he was very much a supporter of, of the underdog and he did what he could to restore balance in the eyes of men yeah. and uh, as well i'm sure at that time although you don't know a lot of stories about animals per se with him um he is um a spirit you know that taught and still teaches through his presence here uh the power of what it means to be natural uh and someone who risked everything uh, for everyone uh, to be a witness for that so, or to, for us to be a witness to that, I should say, he was not a witness, he was a victim of that. But anyway, uh, look at the third house, ninth house, strong Pisces, Virgo, Sag rising, of course, 
And um, Stacy, just just before this show, shared something with me that I'd like her to read with everybody as we celebrate uh, this renegade. I call him renegade. So go ahead, Stacy. All right. Yeah, this is just a little something that I wrote last year, um, dedicated to Christ, to the original Jesus. So this is it. Um, this is dedicated to the man who came to answer our deepest questions in the form of posing questions in return. This is to the man who gave all the hungry a fish. I'm going to cry. Oh. <laughs> but more importantly, taught them how to fish. This is to the man who got mad as hell, seeing money and greed take over spaces that were intended to be holy and a sanctuary from all the BS in the world. Best tantrum ever. <laughs> this is to the man who cooperated with his destiny, destiny in ways that most of us could never summon the courage to do. This is to the man who played clean while his opponents played dirty. This is to the man who reminded us to think of things in the sense that the weak, disposable, and disadvantaged are every bit as important as the ones who wear the crowns. Speaking of crowns, this is to the man who was forced to wear one made of thorns around his precious head. He carried his own cross after being beaten and made no attempt to hurt anyone back. This is to... The this is to the man who has taught us so much about the trans transcendent impulse that exists in all of us and how we can consciously develop it in ourselves. This is to the man who argued for essential equality. He argued for any one of us being the kind of instrument and magnetic force in the world. For those of us who choose to be it when and where the rubber meets the road, which will happen every day in minuscule or massive ways if you pay attention. Happy Easter, everyone. Find love and wisdom in your hearts today and tomorrow. <laughs> this, it's what he came for. <sighs> Thank you so much for that. And that pure emotion <laughs> is a perfect reflection of your essence, Stacy, of the Damon essence, and what is needed for us all to evolve, to be able to access that kind of vulnerability. Uh, that's where the waters run. They run deep, then they run forward. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to also share that tomorrow is my anniversary for becoming an, an evolutionary astrologer. <laughs> oh my God. And Easter Sunday was the first time that I heard Jeffrey Wolf Green speak uh, 21 day, 21 years ago tomorrow at, uh, gosh, now I'm blanking on the name of this conference, um, Astro 2000, it was called in 1999. And I walked into a lecture he was giving on Saturn, of all things. I have Saturn and Pisces square the nodes, so I yeah. need to hear about that on Easter Sunday, so, <laughs> you know. My whole life I'd been at church on Easter Sunday and I was at an astrology lecture by Jeffrey oh. Wolf Green. And it was on that day, 21 years ago, that I said, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to know more about. And it just literally, uh, it made me cry like you just cried. And yeah. feeling like, wow, there's, there's a body of work out there that can reach people in this way is so powerful. So uh, anyway, thank you again for, for sharing what you've written that is just so beautiful and for sharing your personal story. Uh, it is really important to remember that uh, it does take time. Yeah. Evolving yeah. takes time and it, it's all about right timing. And it took uh, many years for you to recover your nature and until you were ready to actually also be an astrologer yeah. in the way that you were built and born to be. He never said you couldn't be an I astrologer. <laughs> he just said, you need to recover your nature and then you can be twice the astrologer that you could have been otherwise. And so thank you so much for 
all the efforts you've made to, and the courage you've had to uh, tackle the well, access, I should say, in order to be here today. And so okay. we will have, uh, this says EA and the Damon Archetype part three. Um, this is part two. Part three is coming, <laughs> but thank, <laughs> thank you so much, Stacey. Any last thoughts before we go? Oh my gosh. No, I feel like I let it, I laid it all down there. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> No, and I'm um, honestly like, if someone doesn't break down in tears in a reading, I don't feel like I've done my job. So, you know, yeah. that's what we need to do as astrologers to really help access the emotion within the people we're working with. So we know that they're access accessing the river within themselves that will lead them back to the sea. So yeah. if you're interested in learning more about evolutionary astrology, please access our, the website and uh, check out the message board. Uh, where you can post questions there and connect with other studying astrologers. Until next time, namaste. Namaste.